I was doing some scuba diving with some friends off the southern coast of Maui. The waters are beautiful, just as much as the fish life. But somewhere along the journey, I got spooked when I saw this strange dangly looking creature swimming out of a small alcove underneath the water. It looked like a cross between an octopus and a squid, and it had these weird arms that were long enough to wrap around its body and then extend all the way down its tail end. It radiated purple to red and had these long tendrils that drug behind it. No, not like tentacles, but almost like stingers, kind of like a jellyfish. That's what they looked like. This creature was very large, longer than me, and I'm six foot. The thing swam towards us, and all of us watched in awe as it slowly approached. Then, it seemed to lunge forward at us. My friend quickly started swimming out the other way, and we all began swimming back towards the boat. We have never seen this animal before, so we weren't sure what to expect. It pursued us in the water, the whole 80 feet back to our anchored boat. I knew we were only a mile or so offshore, but I swear it swam faster and faster, closing in on us. We were able to get back on the boat and sped off. It never reappeared. We never saw the creature again after that, but we did come back in that exact spot for two more days after for more scuba diving before continuing on our journey to another section of ocean. Whatever that thing was, it was certainly a new creature we had seen, make no mistake. During our second and third days there, at the part of the coast, we never saw this creature again. I have no idea what it was, and the thing just looked very bizarre. I'm convinced it had followed us back to the boat the first time, and then hid. It was no animal we knew of. I almost wonder if that thing was just trying to chase us off, or maybe it was actually trying to kill us. I have never been back to that part of the underwater reef, which was south of our boat that day. My mind still races with possibilities of what it could have been, and what it was doing there. The next two days we were scuba diving there, we actually spent more of our time exploring the northern, western, and eastern regions, even seeing sea turtles. No sharks, thankfully. Because of what we do, we happen to know some experts in our social circles. When asked about what we had seen, they weren't quite sure what we were talking about. These are experienced guys who study marine life. They know just about every fish, every whale, everything. We all saw the same thing, and to the best of their understanding, what we saw isn't a normal animal that lives in this area. My best guess is that it could have been a large creature that was passing through, but ultimately, I don't know. I've never seen a creature like that before. It looked so very alien-like, as much as the life does in the sea. After some thinking, the four of us agreed that it was most likely a large cephalopod of some kind. This was quite possibly a large and very aggressive one, but still not something you would ever want to encounter again. We had gotten lucky. I still remember looking into the alcove and seeing that thing come out of its hole, with its tentacles all around it. All in all, it was an interesting experience, but I'll say this. If that creature's tentacles would have grabbed at us, we would have needed a lot more luck than what we actually had. Years ago, during tuna fishing season, far off about 65 miles in the ocean from Massachusetts, we all had a nearly terrifying experience out there. This was later on in the season, around October, but something very large nearly capsized our fishing boat, something much larger than any whale. I don't know what it was exactly that scared us so much, but it slightly surfaced multiple times afterwards. It appeared to have a very elongated body that we made out to be a large sea serpent-esque animal, maybe an eel. The thing came from underneath the boat, and to my best guess, it accidentally hit our boat while ascending to the surface, which was so powerful, nearly capsized us. The ocean is an unknown place after all. We were all pretty shaken up by this event, but luckily none of us got seriously hurt and there's no telling the true size of any animals that live down there in the deep. When you're roughly 65 miles offshore, anything is possible 
in terms of sea life. You'll run into all sorts of things you never thought possible. So when I say part of this unknown creature surfaced, it was really only parts of its body, which we all made out to be kind of like a long eel body. I'm not lying when I say that this thing was larger and longer than a whale. Once it hit our boat and nearly knocked us over, it continued nonchalantly swimming east, unfazed by the impact. When you have a sea creature that large, I have no idea how it accidentally hit our boat. Maybe it wasn't accidental. That's just myself trying to convince me it wasn't a nefarious event. I think with how big that thing was, if it wanted to capsize us and devour us whole, it could have in traditional sea monster fashion. Unsurprisingly, for me, maybe not for you. Since I work around hardened and experienced fishermen for many years, they all have their own terrifying sea monster type stories that they've shared with me over the years. This was just my real first experience with a larger than life sea creature. I think it actually set the tone for my life to this day, and everything I've done in some way has been trying to keep a grasp on reality and sanity against all odds. I've had other close calls and stories, but those I'll keep for another time and place. I think the important part is what happened in the ocean and how it's relatable to discovering new species of creatures in the ocean. There is so much unknown life that exists that we have no idea about. Since we're the ones spending so much time out in this terrain, we get the joy of running into these things. It's a risk all of us face every single day out there, and it's an exciting and terrifying experience at the same time. Every new discovery starts off as a mystery. When we bring these new life forms back to the surface of enlightenment and learn more about them, it's a whole new adventure all over again. Like I said, this long eel-like creature was much longer than a whale, maybe double or triple in length. And you would think with all of us on board nearly being capsized that we would be phased by the event. Surprisingly, none of us long term were, because so many of the men that I fished with were so hardened from their own sea adventures. Well, this was just another day on the job, business as usual. Since it was my first real quote unquote sea monster experience, I was convinced it was Leviathan himself, but maybe not. I can safely walk away from this event though and tell you it was the largest sea creature that I've ever known or seen in my entire life. I mean this thing had to have been over 70 feet in length and probably double the width of a whale. I'm not kidding either. You need to understand that for something to nearly capsize a fishing boat, it's a pretty big deal. One of my close friends who I fished along with, he's an older guy, but during his tenure as a fisherman, he's seen some really large alligator-like animals out in the ocean. He calls them aquadiles or aquatic crocodiles. He goes on to tell me that they are the largest unspoken sea predators he has ever seen. His theory is that there is a subspecies of aquatic crocodiles nearly 60 to 70 feet in length that just never died out from extinction and are still around from the dinosaur days. This would explain his own sightings that he's had around Australia and other areas of the world. I guess seeing these large type of aquatic crocodilians are very common around the New Zealand Australian area. Why? I'm not exactly sure, but I've never myself gone tuna fishing around there, or really any fishing for that matter. But either way, if that's what I have to deal with seeing, you can count me out. Back in 2011, I got the chance as a university student to attend a small deep sea expedition in the Gulf Coast of Mexico during May of the same year. The trip was more or less about testing out the current boundaries of deep sea expeditions and the current technology available to us at the time than it really was anything else. Because of my performance in school and interest in marine biology at the time, and because I knew the right people, I got to be selected to take part. I had no idea what to expect, but I figured I would just go along with the group for the sake of going on an adventure. The trip itself went well enough. We were able to explore the deepest parts of the ocean floor without any problems. However, there was one encounter that I will never forget. It happened when we were exploring a large underwater basin known as the Sigsby Deep. It's a small portion in the central part of the Gulf Coast that is around 14,000 feet deep. Man has explored much deeper, but again, 
This point of an expedition was to test how newer technology could sustain significant water pressure. The entire expedition was made up of three boats, each equipped with different equipment and various scientific instruments. We had several marine biologists aboard, as well as a few other crew members with technical skills such as various technicians. When exploring the region, you're not allowed to take anything with you that could be possibly left behind, be it supplies or equipment. This is for two reasons. The first being that if something were to happen to your boat and you had supplies aboard, you would have no way to provide for your crew. The second being that everything you bring with you must be able to withstand that high of pressure. That's not to say that we didn't find anything of value. While exploring and descending, we did find a large number of species that had not yet been seen before by any other expeditions in the area. We also managed to collect several new species of jellyfish, new types of crab, and an abundance of other marine life. That was a joy. Once we really started descending into the basin is when we got the radio call from one of the ships above saying we needed to ascend back up to the surface immediately. Something very large was ascending from the bottom of the basin a bio life form and was on the course to collide with us at a nearly 90 degree angle. We all scrambled to get ready and prepared our gear while we waited for the signal that would tell us what to do next. At this point, I don't think anyone had ever encountered anything like this before. There was no warnings given to us or any indications that we should prepare ourselves for this type of event. All we knew was that this thing was coming towards us fast and we needed to get out of the area as soon as possible. We were able to successfully ascend back up our ship to the surface without any issues, thank God. We were then shown what our machinery picked up and what exactly they had seen. Judging from the data, roughly 2,000 feet below our ship at the time, something of incredible size and mass was ascending quickly upwards from the bottom of the basin which again, for those of you that are listening, is 14,000 feet deep. So large that the force of whatever it was coming up to the water could have had a devastating impact on our tiny submarine. We were able to quickly move off course and then ascend from there without any problems. But had we continued to stay on our course and continue descending, we would have smacked right into, well, whatever it was. The only thing we can make out was that it was indeed some sort of bio life form that we lost track of once it ascended to a certain point, because it turned as it reached out of the basin, but continued to stay along the bottom floor of the Gulf Coast. At the time, our surface home base boat was using proprietary patent pending technology, along with sonar technology, if you're curious as to how we were able to see what this was and how it was approaching. During this time, we could get a glimpse a small glimpse to that of larger than life life forms living down in certain depths into the basin. This life form just happened to be ascending from the bottom and came into range of reading. The machine estimates are very rough because it was still being worked on at the time, but I heard potentially this life form was anywhere around 37.2 meters to 48 meters in length, judging by what they had captured on their equipment. That means whatever this was, was literally enormous. That's a colossal sized underwater animal, but for something to live in such depths like the basin would have to be of incredible size to withstand such water pressure anyway. Now that we're in 2020, technology has been perfected and more advanced than it was nine years ago. I'm sorry my story isn't that exciting, but it left all of us freaked out and excited at the same time. The basin extends pretty deep so something was making its home all the way down in there. What was it exactly? Well, even we can't be too sure 